So today we're very happy to have uh, Banosh all the way from uh, University of British Columbia, who's going to be telling us about microstates of a uh, two-dimensional black hole in straight. Banosh, please take it away. So first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So today we present a work that was done in collaboration with uh, Olga Papadoulaki, that is at Perimeter Institute, and actually it's based on these two uh, works. And, but you should also see some related work uh, by, by the, the group of the people there that is somehow related, but the techniques that we used are very different. So it should be thought as a complementary, let's say, uh, work. So the plan is the following. Uh, even though there are some experts in the audience, I plan to give a, a quite thorough introduction as far as I can in one hour. So I will first tell you about the correspondence between matrix quantum mechanics and sequence so one Hubble string theory. Then I will review a bit uh, the correspondence between the Euclidean to the black hole and its relation with the Cosset model, the Vesumino with a Cosset model, and sign Hubble theory. Uh, and then I will describe the duality web between all these uh, systems uh, that and also how this, uh, these systems are related to a model of matrix one mechanics that also has one deformations. And this model was uh, described by, by Kazakh, of course, of and Kutas of them is, uh, here. Uh, now in the main part, uh, I will describe uh, our work with Olga in 2017 uh, about defining a model that we dubbed uh, the ZZ FZZT model. Uh, I will focus on the non-singlet uh, non in matrix one mechanics. And then I will say how, how uh, the partition function of these models uh, can be written in terms of a representation theoretic statistical sum. And I will explain why this is important. And then I will take a limit of, uh, uh, of the Young diagrams when they, they acquire a sort of continuous shape. Uh, I will try to define what are the saddle points uh, of this uh, partition function sum. Uh, and using that, uh, we will describe the thermodynamics of the systems and the phase diagram. And then in the end, I will conclude and uh, discuss also some future uh, directions. So first, uh, let me start with about uh, what is matrix quantum mechanics. Uh, we have a zero plus one dimensional quantum mechanical theory of n by n Hermitian matrices and then on dynamical gauge fit, uh, they all depend just on time. Now, uh, the path integral of such systems can be written uh, in this form. And uh, uh, generically, if you have matrices and you are able, it's actually advantageous to try to diagonalize them. And in the present case, you can use a unitary transformation. Uh, and the matrices that uh, we used, uh, lambda is diagonal now, and U is a unitary. Now, uh, one of the most important things about this uh, procedure is that one picks a Jacobian from the path integral measure. Uh, and this Jacobian contains this uh, totally anti-symmetric factor that is called the van der Mott determinant. And this is responsible for many uh, interesting physical aspects of uh, matrix models. Now, uh, let me pass to a Hamiltonian description. Uh, the Hamiltonian contains three terms. There is the usual kinetic term. There is the potential term of the potential of the matrix that we had. And there's also a two-body term, uh, two-body force, uh, that has this uh, J i j operators. And these operators should be thought of as momenta that are conjugated to this SGN rotation. Now, you remember we had the gauge field, and the role of the gauge field in the Hamiltonian picture is essentially to impose the gas law constraint. So uh, essentially, when you impose this constraint from the equations of motion of the gauge field, essentially, you set all this j to 0. So essentially, you totally kill this term. And this is called the singlet sector uh, projection. Now, uh, you can further perform a few transformations. You can rescale the coordinates lambda. And you can also absorb the van der Waals factor into the wave function. So now the, U, the new wave function, the tilde wave function, is totally asymmetric and fermionic. And essentially, you have a Schrodinger equation time independent Schrodinger equation of this form. And essentially, this describes n non interacting fermions in a potential view of lambda. But here, expanded the first Why unit. are they fermions? They're fermions because, uh, as I wrote here, you absorb this van der Waals uh, determinant that is totally asymmetric into the new wave function. So it's like a slatter determinant. So when the, the particles are in the same position, the wave function goes to zero. The usual statement. But they have a second order equation of motion? Yeah, it's a non relativistic system. These are not relativistic terms. And what was kappa? Uh, kappa was the uh, coupling of the cubic term. We, we made some scalings. 
if you do a perturbative expansion. But in general, you have a potential. The reason why I define these new variables will become clear in the next slide where I will take the so called double scale. And what is the equation of motion for J? Well, I didn't even tell you exactly what J's are, right? Because in some sense, in this singlet sector, you don't even need to know what they are. It but, will become important later. And I will usually, say, even when you have a Gauss law constraint, you have to impose the equation of motion. Yeah, yeah, that's what, it, that's what you do here, right? You take the variation of with respect to A, which is proportional no, to J, and then it's zero. <clears throat> That's precisely the constraint that we use. Later, I will tell you more, more details about J, but you will have to wait until the second part. Okay, uh, let me describe now the so called double scaling limit. So, imagine a potential here. I drew an unstable potential that is relevant for the bosonic uh, case. So, how do you define your ground state? You start with filling in some excitations, bosonic excitations, up to the so called Fermi surface. And this defines for you the highest. Uh, uh, excited state. And then the idea is the following. The idea is you set h bar to zero. So imagine that you make the distances between different energy levels smaller and smaller and smaller. So you, you form a sort of liquid, but at the same time, you also need to send n to infinity so that we keep the distance from the tip of the potential to a fixed uh, uh, mm -hmm. distance. Then essentially the picture uh, is the following. You pass from this picture to this picture. You have a Fermi liquid, and then you have a fixed chemical potential uh, that uh, tells you how far you are from the inverted uh, oscillator tip. Now, uh, there are two, uh, two basic, let's say, uh, cases. Uh, you could either have only the one side of the potential field, or you could have both sides of the potential field. And the second case would, would be dual to a, a quartic potential that is stable. And I will tell you in a, in a few. Uh, uh, this is uh, the, the stable case is uh, the so-called supersymmetric uh, uh, zero field uh, uh, string theory. So these are the let's say this is the, the double scaling limit and the two basic uh, 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 cases that one can have. So far I haven't described to you the connection with the quantum gravity path integral. Let me now go to so, so we're assuming like a particular potential now when we're talking. It doesn't really matter. Thing. So in this double scaling limit, all that it matters is that you have a sort of unstable. Uh, maximum, that's what matters. And the only other thing that matters is, is what if you feel both sides or only one side of the potential. For the boson case, uh, the model is non perturbatively unstable, but in perturbation theory, uh, the tunnel probability goes to zero. So you can just work with one side of uh, the potential field. But there are non, non perturbative instabilities, the boson case. In the, in the uh, supersymmetric case, both sides are free. And the model is not perturbatively stable, well defined, even beyond the perturbation. Okay. So, uh, yes. So confused about that. So the runaway in the potential is coming from which coupling? That was from your coupling? Yes. So here I just I just described the boson case that I will mainly focus. But there's also a fermion. I, I wanted to mention because you know that that's interadductor material, that is also a, a version where the potential is quartic. And in that case, essentially the double scaling limit, you have both sides filled. And this model is also non perturbative state. It's completely well, well defined, even at the non perturbative level. That's the most important thing. So, okay, now the connection with the string theory is through this, uh, through the so called double scaling limit. And in th this limit is different than the usual Hoft limit in the following sense. As you know, in the Hoft limit, uh, you have uh, a weighted genus expansion uh, of the Riemann surfaces that you can create from this uh, 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 fat graphs, but only the genus zero is dominant and the other uh, general subdominant. While now, in the, taking this double scaling limit, you can essentially produce uh, smooth surfaces and keep all genera because essentially this chemical potential that they define is essentially related to the inverse string coupling. So with finite new, essentially you can keep all possible. Genera and way. Now, this quantum gravity theory is called sequels on Lubin theory, and the target space is essentially two dimensional. So we have the time direction that is obvious, but there's also an emergent space direction phi uh, that essentially comes uh, through the matrix again values lambda. And the background is not really just a flat background because it also contains a so called linear dilaton and an exponential time. I will tell you in a while. I'll describe this background in more detail. 
Now, from a more modern perspective, uh, you could say that this matrix quantum mechanics essentially describes the dynamics of any zero zero brains whose excitations are essentially now an open street tachyon and they want dynamical, uh, one D non dynamical gates. Now, this double scaling limit is an analog of the uh, decoupling limit that, uh, that you know. <clears throat> it's slightly different. And in this case, the matrix again values lambda are related with the coordinate phi, but the transformation is generally a bit complicated and non local. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me now give you a few more details about this uh, string theory, about the Yubel theory. So, as you noticed, we're not in the critical number of dimensions. And essentially, we don't cancel the conformal anomaly. So, the idea is the following uh, you, uh, in order to understand this uh, string theory, essentially, you need to keep the conformal mode of the uh, world set metric dynamical and understand its dynamics. So, in this case, uh, the measure, the integral over the matrix is not invariant under the value transformation. So essentially, you will find an anomaly in the measure. Now, if you take this anomaly, you exponentiate it. And OK, if you do a few steps that I don't have time, unfortunately, to tell you here, you find essentially an action of this type. So let me describe you what, what this action describes. So this d hat is uh, the world symmetric in, in a particular conformal gauge. This uh, x mu are uh, uh, the usual uh, fields from the point of view of, view of the world sheet that are also the target space coordinates. You see that the conformal mode of the metric is a sort of uh, additional coordinate as the previous one, but you pick also two terms. Uh, you also pick, for example, this exponential uh, term. Now, this new theory is a conformal theory under a simultaneous transformation of that type, but there are some relations. So the total central charge should be zero. There's a central charge for phi. And then this parameter Q uh, is fixed uh, based on how many of these uh, bosonic coordinate fields you have that are parameterized by D. And then there is a parameter B here in the potential. And this parameter B is related with Q with this function. OK, uh, maybe you, you won't see it very fast. But if you play with these equations, you will find that essentially this B is real only up to C equals 1. Then becomes complex, and above uh, 25, it becomes symmetric. But in this case, we will just focus on uh, the case C equals 1. So we won't have this trouble of defining level theory in the non critical, let's say, uh, above C equals 1 case that are there. So the phi came from the matrix eigenvalues. Where did the x mu come from? Uh, the x mu, okay. So this is now, right now, it's a word, it's the word set, so you won't see anything. But for us, x mu is the time. Right? Now it will be the time. We'll take it to be Euclidean time in the beginning, but then okay, we also want to describe some scattering process, etc. Okay. So the coordinates now for us, well, in the next slide, now this this is more general, right? This is right. the theory more general. So you could have more and more than uh, single uh, coordinate. So okay, do you have any questions about the general construction of fluid theory? And now I will specialize for simple one. Now uh, uh, in sequels one, we can also interpret uh, our theory as a string theory in two dimensions, in the presence of some non-trivial background fields. So now uh, we take the, uh, the general expression for a sigma model with a target space metric, a tachyon field, and a dilaton field. And if you uh, uh, try to match with the Liouville action that I wrote in the previous slide, you can essentially interpret the Liouville action as describing a string theory in a two-dimensional ta flat target space metric where the dilaton is linear in, in phi and the tachyon is exponential. And the two coordinates are essentially x0, that is the time, and x1, that is phi. That is space. Now, this is an exact string uh, background. And you can start computing stuff with this theory. For example, you have computed the partition function of the torus, some scattering up each of tachyons at three level, some basic things. And in all cases, uh, the matrix model has been shown to agree and surpass these results and also gives predictions uh, for future uh, computations. Of course, a natural question is the following. OK, that's an interesting background, but we would like to understand other backgrounds, like black holes or more interesting backgrounds, right? Not just this uh, very simple uh, background. And how can we do it? OK, let me slightly change gears. Uh, now, uh, I will describe the Euclidean 2D black hole background. So my, my first starting point is a sort, 
sort of incomplete starting point, but it will be important for what I want to describe later. So if we take the low energy effective action <coughs> of this uh, uh, non-critical state theory, we're gonna write down an effective target space action now. And this contains the metric and, and the dealer. This is the usual uh, type of uh, bosonic low energy effective action. Now, of course, in, the, in this non-critical case, you have some alpha prime corrections that are very important. So you want an exact background, as I would say uh, in a while, exact background, but you can get some intuition just by uh, using this uh, single action to start with. Now, this effective action actually has a, a cigar solution. And I write down the metric here. Uh, the, met the, the geometry looks uh, like that. Uh, and this uh, solution has a linear dilaton, again. Yeah. Uh, it has an integration constant that is essentially the value of the dilaton uh, at the t, or the steering coupling at the t. Uh, the weakly coupling region is here, asymptotically. And here, the coupling becomes stronger. And it also has a fixed temperature, and this comes from requiring smoothness of the background uh, at the tip. Uh, I should also mention uh, something that is interesting physically, that uh, this uh, factor of the geometry appears also in the near horizon limit of high dimensional asymptotically flat black holes, if you take an appropriate uh, large limit as, uh, as it was shown by, by these authors. So this background also has some applications to more, uh, let's say, uh, realistic black holes. And also, uh, Bruno has studied some, uh, and Dave have studied uh, this idea. Uh, any questions here? Okay. So uh, let me now try to go to an exacting alpha prime background, a stringy version of, of that background. It was actually shown that there is a, that there is an exact safety description for this black hole. Where you have a resume of Witten Cosset model, and the Cosset is roughly speaking SL to R mod U1, but again, okay, here I describe it as a Cosset of the uh, uh, hyperbolic space. In these three cases. Now, uh, if, you, if you use this uh, Cosset model construction, uh, essentially the uh, radius of the Euclidean black hole is related with uh, this K, that is essentially the level of the associated uh, Cosset uh, resume of Witten. Uh, model. Now, the metric for the exact cosec was uh, described and also this, uh, uh, derived, sorry, and also described using some algebraic safety techniques uh, by Diagraph and Verlinde. And uh, actually, there's a further formula uh, based on the SL2R algebra that fixes the central charge of the cigar with respect to this level uh, K. And if we want the Volsi theory to be a conformal theory, uh, this case and says fixed to have this file 9 over 4. So it seems, at least from this uh, cause of description, that uh, this black hole needs to have a fixed radius. And if we actually need to want to change the radius, we would like to have, we would need to uh, introduce some additional degrees of freedom of an internal safety. Otherwise, uh, this has a fixed size. This is a fixed size uh, background. Now, uh, let me tell you a few details about the thermodynamics of this uh, black hole. Now, uh, if you use the value of the dilaton and the absence of the conical similarity at the tip, this fixes essentially the mass of the black hole in terms of the string coupling at the tip, or the value of the dilaton and the temperature of the horizon. Now, for the exact background, uh, the relation is slightly different for the asymptotic radius. It takes this form that I write down here. Now, there are some ambiguities in the thermodynamics here uh, because there are various subtraction schemes that one can follow to define the thermodynamics. And also, there is no known target space effective action for which the exact solution that I was mentioning, that you know from safety techniques, uh, whose, uh, whose background is a solution to its uh, equations, of course. So, this was realized uh, even in this uh, old uh, works. And also, it is a string scale background when R equals uh, 3 car in this uh, safety point. Now, nevertheless, uh, there are two yeah. safe qualitative estimates. Both entropy and the mass of this perhaps black hole scale as one over this t squared or this, this way. So it's a, a gravitating object. That's for sure. Now, uh, let me tell you about some further properties of this background. 
Uh, it was actually wrong to assume that the exact uh, background uh, has the same boundary conditions as the previous linear dilaton uh, background. The problem is not in the uh, local fields, the metric and the uh, dilaton, but this one is essentially from string wind modes. Now, uh, for the cigar, these are non local modes that wind around the thermal circuit. Now, for the cigar, the winding is not conserved. So, the concept has an expectation value for the winding modes. Uh, this decreases uh, as you go in the weekly capital region, but not so fast to be a normalizable deformation if k is less than three. And this is a peculiarity of two dimensions. Uh, so, in some sense, uh, when k is less than three, uh, we deform the model with some non normalized operation. So it's like adding sources of these winding modes uh, asymptotically and uh, trying to find the uh, infrared background. And this was uh, also understood by uh, Dave. So actually, what is the asymptotics in the space time? Uh, yes, because you're adding these winding uh, sources. And this is true if k equals less than 3, which is uh, the regime where, yeah. where r equals 3 half yeah. or k equals 9 over 4. Now, of course, you see, you could, you could have the following ideologies. You could say, okay, I want to insist that the concept model is all there is there. <clears throat> uh, but it could be that there is a more general safety, we just don't know it, that can describe this black hole object for a larger idea, right? This concept is what we can do uh, at the moment from the whole city perspective. So you could see this as a fundamental uh, obstruction of defining a black hole for, in this regime, or you could see this as a technical obstruction in terms of the cost model. So for, to describe the black hole in different ways. Uh, we'll discuss more, more about this uh, later. Now, uh, let me describe something else that's called FCC uh, duality. And this is the following. So there is another theory that's called Sanyuvil theory. Uh, I write down here the action, the Sanyuvil theory. And actually it was shown uh, by these authors but there is a duality between this coset safety and this uh, sign theory. Now, uh, in order for this duality to work, there is, there is a matching between parameters. So, that I down here. And uh, I should tell you the important thing to tell you is that this duality is a strong, weak uh, type of duality. Uh, and the reason is the following. So, if you see this in this action, you have this parameter Q and this parameter B. So if you are uh, in, in the regime of small k, uh, then this q is very large. While in the, if you are in the regime of large k, this q is very small. Now, uh, for large k, this is the regime where the background is sort of semi-classical because this cigar has a very large radius in uh, alpha prime units. And this, the, the cigar uh, description is the simplest, the weekly couple description. While if you are in a small uh, radius, uh, Q is very large, and you can do a perturbation theory of B in one over Q. And then this uh, uh, winding, let's say this soluble theory is the simplest description, the perturbative uh, description. Now, uh, a, tra a transition between these two behaviors, uh, a winding string uh, condensate and the black hole uh, is usually termed uh, the black hole uh, string transition. And there are many authors that have uh, worked uh, let's say on this, uh, on this uh, topic. Okay, so let me uh, now tell you uh, a bit about operators that we, uh, one can define. So in scientific theory, uh, one can define the following uh, winding operators. These are all 1, 1,1 uh, dimension operators and hence they are all uh, marginal. And uh, basically you can have two types of dressing, of illegal dressing uh, for these operators. Uh, the minus type of dressing essentially corresponds to non-normalizable operators. So their wave function essentially uh, grows at weak coupling asymptotically, these are sources, and create a local disturbance on, on the wall sheet, while the plus dressing is double. Uh, now you can define similar operators in C equals one UV. Uh, they take the following form, and they are actually agree these two types of operators for R equals uh, three half, which is the conformal uh, coset uh, form. Now, uh, let me describe you a, a slightly more general model that sign Gordon uh, theory coupled to the to the quantum gravity. So the idea of uh, a Kazakh of cost of input as was the following: take the linear dilaton background that is described by matrix quantum mechanics and deform it uh, by adding 
and the first uh, minus uh, type of dressing one emotes. So this is a sign more than model coupled to the uh, quantum gravity. And the soluble theory is approached in the xi goes to infinity mu goes to zero uh, region of parameters. Because you remember now we don't have just the signable theory, we also have this mu e to the to be phi, right? We have an additional term. And that's why this is to the uh, gravity coming to sign board. It's a bit more general. So if we want to kill this uh, mu e to the to phi term that exists in the Lubic theory, we have to take a sort of scale, an additional uh, limit. Now, uh, this model uh, makes sense if phi equals less than two, so that this perturbation is a relevant deformation and does not blow up uh, for a uh, phi uh, uh, goes minus two into infinity, which is the asymptotic with the coupling uh, region. Now, uh, performing a scaling analysis, we find two parameters, one over mu and this uh, power of xi. <coughs> and essentially, there is a dimensionless parameter that governs how strong this winding modes are with respect to the, uh, with the with respect to the Tachyon wall, essentially. And we want to go to the regime where these uh, winding modes are very, very strong compared to the, to the original Tachyon wall. Yes. Can you remind me, is this like a family of uh, CFTs that you have with that dimension? Um, good. Uh, that's right, yes. Is it a normalizable definition? Uh, yeah, the point is that uh, this, yes. So you want it to be a relevant uh, deformation and also not to blow up in the uh, with the capital region. So, yeah. So that's only well, true but that, that's true for R less yeah. than two, right? So there's also this. So for R bigger than two, uh, you cannot really add this term. Sorry, and that's, if it's relevant, it's not a family of CFTs. Oh, well, it's it's relevant, but it's coupled to the Louisville, which makes it much. Exactly. It's relevant in the sine board and in the free boson part. Right. So the full thing is a, yeah, it runs to, to a non trivial CFT and it's exactly marginal or just marginal and leading over there? <clears throat> I think it's exactly marginal. I don't know. Uh, but that should be exactly. Good, good. Yeah, because it's, it's supposed to be a family. Of, I think for any. Psi, you want to say it's a CFT, right? It's a good background. Yeah. Well, how do you prove that it's a Well, I don't know if it's proven here. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I guess they, they might not, might more. I don't know if what things are proven. So I, I cannot comment about what's proven. But but Xi equals zero is a new bill? Xi equals, equals zero, zero. Yeah, and Xi equals very large, and you go to zero sign new bill. Right. right. So, so, so now it's well established, it's just in the middle. There's exactly. Like the like middle, I don't really know. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's known or the detail. Anything calculable as a function of psi? Yes, yes, many things. Uh, I'll tell you. So, uh, let me now first uh, describe the matrix model. Uh, so, the idea was the following uh, consider a default matrix model that incorpor or incorporates these winding modes. And uh, this uh, essentially comes with uh, uh, including some back reacting uh, Wilson loops, the original model. And the mapping is the following. You have a winding mode in the <clears> theory, and then you map it to, to this uh, operator in, uh, in the matrix model. So a basic quantity that you can try to describe is this uh, general vortex perturbed the free energy. So here I write down the free energy in the string theory side. Uh, so you deform the original model with this exponential uh, operator that contains these winding modes. And this corresponds to the matrix model deforming essentially uh, the unitary uh, average with adding essentially all these not trivial uh, Wilson lines that wind around the uh, Euclidean time direction. Uh, now, uh, the specific model that uh, Kazakov, Kostov, and Kutasov uh, uh, studied, dual to sign UPT, has only T1 and T minus 1 equals to xi and uh, Now, let me reca recapitulate a bit uh, about these uh, relations. So, you have a cigar. This is dual by x is equal to sine bill. You have matrix quantum mechanics plus this one in cooperators. This is dual to sine Gordon plus to the quantum gravity. And in the unit where mu is very small and xi is large, essentially you, you go from this picture to that picture. So, this is the, the web of dualities that exist. Now, uh, relate also a bit to, to some questions raised. There's some caveat because from the gravity side, it looked that we cannot really change the range of the cigar, it was fixed. While here, you can actually play with the side. 
there is some range of parameters that you can actually tune and, and uh, play. And also, these dualities are inherently Euclidean. And it's very hard to uh, construct a Lorentzian uh, description of, let's say, the uh, FZZ uh, dual. Now, it is believed, as I will uh, mention, that uh, these winding modes are related in long strings in the uh, uh, Lorentzian picture. So, do you have any question about this, uh, let's say, picture for the, of the duality? Okay. So, so mu, mu was the depth of the was it? Sorry? The matrix was mechanics. It was mu was the depth of the family C. Was yeah, it was, it was related to the depth of the so this duality is it trustworthy when you kind of ignore this non perturbative uh, instanton across the extension barrier? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, at the perturbative level, it's trustworthy. Now, if you want to study non perturbative effects, you need to be a bit more careful. But whatever I will say, now the things that have been checked, at least in, in this realm of the black hole, are at the perturbative level. Now, non perturbative effects, okay. But okay, for non perturbative version, there is also a version of this black hole in for supersymmetric you will I don't want to get into that, but there's also a version that's more more so controlled. The duality was a weak strong duality, right? So are you talking, the duality are you was talking about per perturbation theory in that same parameter or a different parameter? No, it was a different parameter. So the parameter there was a strong weak duality with respect to K, right? K and Q. Uh, so it was a weak strong duality with respect to the size of the money. So this design board of the well, this design you build is weakly coupled. For smaller radii, and uh, this was weakly coupled for large radii. Okay. It's a different problem. But as I said, there is a version that is non perturbatively stable. Good question. So let me describe a few things about these long folded strings. So uh, if you include uh, boundaries, uh, the world scene. Uh, you can essentially define a, a new type of uh, a boundary state, the so called D1 uh, brains. And also, uh, uh, from the bulk perspective, from the target space perspective, this corresponds to these like long strings that have their points uh, endpoints being in these weakly coupled regions and the threads and they scatter in this uh, uh, vacuum potential. So, you have two types of excitations the closed strings and also these long. Uh, open uh, strings. So uh, th just rem remember this thing. Uh, I don't want to get into details now because I don't have time. And now let me go to the main part uh, uh, of my talk. So it was uh, it was known because it was studied by various authors that the singlet sector of matrix quantum mechanics is not able to describe black holes. People tried to study other stuff. They did a lot of computations and they never found any black hole characteristics. And it was proposed that black hole could exist in the non singlet sector of the uh, matrix quantum. Now, it was also shown later by uh, Maldasena that the adjoint representation is related to uh, a long such string as the one that I described uh, before that extends along uh, UV. Now, more recent work has argued that uh, uh, there is a stringy version of uh, ER EPR, and the uh, eternal black hole could be dual to condensate of many yeah. such uh, long uh, strings. Uh, so, one should actually study not just a single. Uh, for the string, but one should study a larger number of uh, such strings. Uh, for example, uh, states co containing n folded uh, strings are uh, related to a reducible representation with a young, young tableau of n boxes and then under boxes. So here I just write down the simplest uh, representation. But you remember, we have the issue. Uh, if we want somehow to describe these long strings, as you know, it was gauged. And actually, we need now to ungauge it. So there are two things that you, you could try to do. Either go to the ungauged model without the gauge field to describe these representations. But there is a natural question if we can still keep this as you gauged. Because if you remember, it came from a deep brain action. And there is always a, a gauge field uh, in these deep brain actions, right? So, so the idea that we had with Olga was the following. You start with the original gauge action, and then you add some uh, additional open strings that stretch between the FCC and FCCT brains, between the two different types of brains. And these are described in terms of these uh, biofundamental fields that have two indices. They have a, 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 an N index and then an F index. So you add an action of the following types, the usual uh, type. And now this model has, as you know, the gauge symmetry, but it also has a, a global symmetry. 
And okay, now recent work we define the completely gauged model, but I don't have time to discuss this either. Uh, and also, there's, it is possible to add also an additional term, sort of Chen Simon step term. But yeah, it's not uh, described this. Now, the constraint that uh, uh, I was asked previously uh, gets modified. And this JJ now, it's uh, proportional uh, to this bilinear of the uh, fermionic fields. So, in some sense, these uh, bi fundamentals <coughs> feed the non trivial representations because this JJ now is non trivial. Now, the Hamiltonian is more involved. It contains these two body terms, this JJ, and also some additional uh, pieces from, from the masses. And actually, it is possible with a further transformation. Uh, to define some spin operators with bilinears of, of these uh, 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 fields and then write down the full model as a spin calogero model, where this uh, calogero type of interaction, spin calogero type of interaction is this one. In the presence of an external magnetic field, then this magnetic field essentially is related to, to the masses of <coughs> the uh, So this is a sort of more, more rich model that has more non-trivial uh, dynamics. You know, it's the ground state of this. Not really. Well, it depends. Okay. So, first of all, there are two cases. Uh, you, could, uh, you could either have, because you are in one D, this size could be either fermions or bosons. In one case, you get a ferromagnetic type of chain. In the other, you get an anti-ferromagnetic. I think in one of the two cases, the ground state is known, but I don't remember now. You could, yeah. Well, Kronakos has worked a lot on that, so that he has a review. I think you can find it there, but I don't want to say it more because I'm not sure uh, which case is. I think the ferromagnetic is the ground state. Okay, now I, I will tell you how from our model you can go to the model of Kadev of Kostov and Kutasov. So we completed the canonical partition function. We reduced the problem as an integral uh, over these uh, winding modes. And essentially, this has all possible windings and done. But if you further take a double scaling limit, or you take a large number of uh, these uh, uh, quarks, in some sense, and you make them very heavy, heavy, you keep on the first winding mode. And then you uh, land it precisely to the matrix model of Kazakov Kostov and uh, Kutasov. Uh, the nice thing about this is the following is that uh, the model uh, of Kazakov Kostov and Kutasov did not have an obvious. A Lorentzian interpretation. Now we have a model that has a Hamiltonian, an explicit Hamiltonian, whose partition function in a limit is related to the partition function that was studied uh, in the part. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, a, a few more. I need to go a bit faster because how much I have 15. Well, I started a bit later, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I have left like 35. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to analyze the double scaling limit, you remember we have the chemical potential. So you actually need to go to the grand canonical uh, partition function. Uh, okay, a further complication is that there is some relation between these couplings on the matrix model side and the UV side. But this, this relation was understood uh, some time ago. And uh, you can also uh, realize the grand canonical partition function of this class of models as a tau function of the general uh, to the higher end. So what are all these uh, complicated uh, symbols? I have to explain. So these things are called in this integrable hierarchy language niva uh, time variables. Uh, this J plus minus are currents. And this G is a so-called GL infinity element that uh, encapsulates, let's say, the dynamics of the model. Now, the model that we had uh, with Olga obeys a bit more uh, a general discrete equation, the Hirota miva difference equation and it reduces to the total difference differential equation in a very limited way we just keep the first uh, one most. But in general you can describe you have the more the most general total hierarchy because you have an infinite number increase of all these uh, uh, couplings. Now some results from Toda. So this is exactly what uh, uh, Isaac of course of put us of did. We solved the total equation with some boundary conditions, and the boundary condition was the undeformed theory, of course. And then they matched uh, some, uh, the, some results from some UV theory for the free energy. So this was very good, but there was a subtlety in this method. So they are, were actually able to solve this equation 
in this sort of uh, dispersion resilience, where mu is taken to be very large, and then analytically continue argue with some analytic continuation arguments, but they are also able to capture uh, this whole new uh, living, uh, which is sort of uh, okay if uh, the t plus and t minus element relatively small, because you could have something like a phase transition, and you know, it could be more complicated. Now, also with these uh, uh, methods, it is actually impossible to compute the attack and scattering processes on a winding condensate background. So, but we would like actually to do that uh, in the future because we want to see uh, what are the characteristics of this object. So if you try to scatter on this object, does it have some effective absorption properties? Does it have something like was in normal modes? Is it more like a black hole or a long string condensate? How does it behave? And then, okay, another uh, issue is that uh, the uh, microstates that the object is composed of, uh, and the uh, coarse grain procedure on them is not clear, is not manifest, please. So our idea with uh, Olga was to realize these microstates in terms of GL infinity representations and the thermodynamic limit uh, that uh, uh, you need to use in order to get the subly is this limit of these uh, continuous unit diagrams uh, that become indistinguishable in the limit and acquire a sort of shape. But I have to explain to you what I mean by, by the last, last stage. No. Any question about the ideology? No? Okay. So let me now uh, uh, move to a smaller size of partitions. So a partition is a sequence of uh, non-increasing integers. And there are two notations, are the usual notation of partitions or this Frobenius notation. So in the Frobenius notation, you have two uh, numbers, this AI and this PI. And the AI counts the number of rows above the diagonal and the beta I, the columns below the main diagonal. So let me give you an example. So imagine this partition here. So you can either say that this is the partition five, five boxes, or one, and one. Or in the Frobenius notation, you have, so you have a diagonal. Here you have one, two, three, four boxes above, two boxes above, <coughs> three boxes below, and this is the diagonal, zero boxes here. So it's just a different way of counting. And when appended with a totally ordered set, this is the set of all young tableau that parameters the areas of uh, the infinity. Now, uh, you remember we had this operator, this DL infinity operator. Uh, you can use a free fermionic formulation and write this as a bilinear of uh, free fermions. And actually, uh, under t-duality, uh, this becomes the generating function of reflection amplitudes. And uh, actually, it is the S matrix of the theory and incorporates all the matrix one mechanics and dynamics. Uh, so, the next idea was to uh, use uh, this following expansion of uh, these current operators in terms of pseudo polynomials and dictates that correspond to partitions that you can form by acting with these fermions on, on a vacuum, start K. So essentially, with these fermions, you, be, you build the Jung diagram that I said before uh, by building uh, non-trivial PIs and QIs, which are essentially related to the AIs, alpha Is, and beta Is that I described in the previous slide. So this is an operator, uh, and this is a state uh, that you can define uh, by essentially this is the state that is defines for you a Jung uh, diagram for fixed PI and QI. There's a one to one response. Is it this sort of clear or? Okay. Now, uh, this is the, the full statistical formula for, for the tab function. You have a sum over partitions or uh, representations. You have these sure polynomials that depend on times. And then you have this GL infinity element that is uh, sandwiched between uh, states that are essentially in one to one correspondence with partitions. Now, actually, uh, you can show that this expression for G is diagonal, you see here. So, because the matrix quantum mechanics uh, uh, is diagonal uh, in, in the basis of irreducible representations, it does not couple different uh, irreps. If you start in the irreps, uh, you will remain the same irreps after scattering. Now, uh, this representation theoretic expansion uh, as a statistical sum uh, will give a meaning to the microstates that comprise essentially this winding string condensate or black hole. And that's the uh, uh, advantage of this uh, uh, description. Now, let me give you a few more details about this measure. So uh, all these representations 
are weighted by this uh, so-called super measure. And actually, you can show that as you increase these type variables, the expectation value of the size of the partition, so with this uh, uh, size of lambda, uh, I mean how big the Jung diagram is, its area, uh, becomes larger when you have large uh, time deformations, large uh, parameters. So you need to study essentially the limit of large Jung diagrams uh, to understand, let's say, this uh, size of the limit. Uh, let me specialize a bit. So if you remember, uh, in the case of Kazakh, Kostov, and Kutasov, we only had the first winding modes, the first parameter. So the measure now simplifies to the so-called Planser measure that involves the, the dimension of the uh, representation. Uh, you can write it in, uh, in this uh, formula. Uh, this uh, order of lambda is again the size of the particular. Mm -hmm. And as you make this larger and larger and larger, then it concentrates. It exhibits a cardi-like growth and concentrates to this uh, to a limiting uh, Jung diagram shape that is called the very care of uh, Logan uh, limiting shape. So let me explain to you what is this function, this uh, omega uh, y, and this <coughs> function is the following. So you have an axis here y, this is omega, and that's the limit of the shape. I don't know if you've ever seen this type of shape. Is there any question about this? So you take a Jung uh, diagram, you make it very large, you, you make, you make the, the number of boxes to be very large, but you string the area such that you keep the total area of each box so that you keep the total area of the graph fixed. And then you try to find a limiting shape in the space of uh, representations. That defines for you this quantity, yes. So th this measure is, has some nice properties like it's like right invariant or like so what you like? Light and very, like what are you doing? Uh, yeah, depending on, exactly. Depending on the specialization, it has some nice properties. Yeah. For example, this plant serial measures have some nice properties, but I don't remember them by heart. So it depends on the specific uh, times that you put, right? In these sort of Um Okay. Uh, but okay, that's not the full story. Because you remember, instead, we don't even we don't only have this statistical. A pseudo polynomial weighting factor, but we also have this DI infinity element, right? That comes from the NKM dynamics, from the scattering uh, problem, scattering phase. So this also uh, gives a contribution uh, to the partition function. So you need to self consistently uh, minimize the full problem that contains both the sur measure and the scattering dynamics. And actually, it is possible uh, to do that. So uh, uh, it's more convenient technically. Do it using Frobenius coordinates. So you define continuous analogs of these Frobenius uh, coordinates and densities of boxes, and you write down the full partition function now that has both the sur polynomials and the uh, uh, scattering amplitude <coughs> as an integral over this uh, of this uh, continuous coordinates p and q. Okay, uh, you do that, and then you write down. You can formulate the full problem. In terms of two uh, interacting subject point equations for the continuous p variable and the continuous q variable. So these variables essentially parameterize the two halves of the Jung diagram, the, the continuous shapes. Now you have an interact, interacting uh, subject point equation. You define the resolvents as usual. You write down the equations for the resolvents in terms of certain cuts. Okay, these are technicalities. Uh, and then, okay, uh, in the limit where this mu is small, uh, essentially you find that only reflection symmetric uh, Jung diagrams contribute. And due to this Z2 symmetry, you can essentially uh, formulate everything in terms of a single integral equation uh, that essentially all its properties are, char are characterized by a form of effective potential. And the derivative of this effective potential is essentially the force term. That depends on the two parameters, R and this uh, xi effect. Now, there are two, two important cases. So now you will see where these conditions on R uh, pop up in this uh, description. So for R less than 2, the effective potential is stable. And for R less than 2, uh, the effective potential is unstable and goes to minus infinity. So the behavior changes dramatically if you are, you know, you remember these two regimes for R less than 2 or R bigger than 2. Now, for R less than two, we have two types of saddles. Uh, in the third saddle, we have no saturation in the density of boxes, as you see here. 
this is the form of the effective potential, and you have states here. And then uh, we managed to derive everything, the resolvent, everything in terms of some elliptic functions, but uh, I don't have much time, so I won't tell you the details. But we also have another uh, solution uh, that is essentially the potential will be like a single joint. So you have a sort of like single cut. Ah, I forgot to mention that this z coordinate u is z squared, right? Because we have these reflection symmetric uh, unit diagrams. So uh, in this regime of parameters, uh, we have another type of solution that saturates the density saturates to its maximal value, that is one. So there are two, okay, we managed to find the resolvent again in this case with some techniques. So if you find two types of leading shapes, this one, this one, this one is for the unsaturated phase and this is for the saturated phase. And actually we found that there is a third order phase transition between these two uh, behaviors in the Jung uh, diagrams, depending on the uh, parameters uh, desired. Now, for R bigger than two, the potential is unstable, you see, but we found that, the, that there is a sort of metastable state here, and that's the density of the boxes of this uh, metastable state. <clears throat> and this exists only for some, let's say, constrained uh, regime of uh, parameters. Now, uh, using all these uh, uh, techniques, uh, we computed the free energy uh, in these various phases. And we found that uh, in the uh, saturated phase, the free energy takes this form to the leading uh, uh, in the genes expansion, to the subleading corrections. And this precisely corresponds with the results of uh, Kazakov, Kostov, and Kutasov, exactly, uh, for the free energy. Uh, the specific heat, which you can compute from here, is negative. And vanishes at this so called post elite stowless uh, temperature, which is r equals two. And the, this object generically is an unstable object because it has negative specific heat. Now uh, we can also change the ensemble and consider an ensemble where we don't fix xi effective, but it's conjugate variable. And its conjugate variable is essentially the size of, uh, of the partition that corresponds to the number of vortex and the vortex pairs. And, uh, here are the uh, basic thermodynamic quantities uh, in this ensemble. So you observe uh, that essentially the mass uh, and the entropy, these are proportional. So uh, in both ensembles, either in the ensemble where we show that the entropy is proportional to the mass or the free energy goes back one over g string square, this is indicative of a gravitating object. And it's consistent with the uh, results. Now, it's actually uh, hard to distinguish uh, whether we have a black hole or a winding condensate because they're both uh, unstable thermodynamically. And, but we also uh, argued that black holes don't exist for uh, R squared R squared uh, three. Now there's a peculiarity because uh, from the matrix model, you can actually go beyond R equals two and find uh, a different type of scaling. Scaling, where instead of this two minus r, you have an r plus two, which uh, somehow uh, reveals an opposite type of dressing, the plus type of dressing for the one modes. And we argued that this type of dressing is, uh, is normalizable and has support in the strongly coupled the region of uh, UV. So perhaps uh, this scaling, this is something that we are exploring, uh, could mean that the black hole can start existing as an excited state in the spectrum of the theory for this uh, range of parameters. But we don't know how to describe it from, the, uh, uh, from this uh, 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 world shift uh, side. Now, uh, before finishing, let me give you the full phase diagram that we uh, uncovered. So actually, it's, uh, the nice thing is that uh, this phase diagram uh, is consistent and generalizes the analysis of Moore on sine Gordon plus 2D quantum gravity. So in the uh, horizontal axis, uh, we depict R. Uh, this is the value of uh, the kick cost of its stowless uh, uh, temperature. And in the vertical axis, we have the effective or G string. And we have, so we have some dust lines and this corresponds to phase transitions. And we have some continuous lines and this corresponds to crossovers. Uh, now, 
for large three coupling and small uh, radius, we have something like we expect that our object is something like this: we have eight in long string condensate or one in mod condensate. Yeah. And this is the regime where we match the results of cutoff of cost of and Now, uh, as you decrease string coupling, still uh, for very high temperatures above the cost uh, uh, Pauli's temperature. Uh, you encounter a very weird regime that is described by elliptic functions, but then at very, very small coupling, you have a sort of one over the string deep brain type of uh, scale. And now you have this weird scale in here that we're try still trying to interpret. And perhaps this is a regime close to here that can have uh, black holes as uh, normalizable states. And then, okay, there are some other regimes, a regime where the thermal linear dilaton background dominates, and the regime that was studying studied by Klebanov, where the condensate has some gap-free energy with respect to the singlet for very large uh, radii. Okay, uh, let me now summarize. So what, what we did is the following. Ah, uh, before summarizing, do you have any questions about the phase diagram? Because it's quite complicated. Yes, so the phase crossovers, where you computed them, or they're like suggestions? Uh, yes, the crossovers are uh, uh, okay. They are not very sharp, and um, as I'm saying, this is a change in the behavior based on these elliptic functions that I was uh, mentioning. So instead of going like one over the string, it goes to some power, right? So, but there's no really phase transition between them. That's why we call them crossovers. They're not really, you know, very sharp. It's very smooth to behave. I just want to say that here it's a complicated region, and okay, it becomes clean in these two. Uh, this tool, and that's why I call it crossover behavior. The, the deep brain physics is where uh, you have the usual. The deep brain physics is at very high temperatures, what people would say above the Hagedorn temperature, but also at very small string coupling. So the object cannot really, you know, bind itself because the string coupling is small. It can't really make a gravitating object. It's like you see in some sense some sort of deep brain physics. So not quite just the ZZ brains and the sequence one. Uh, okay, you need to do a few more computations to, to really clarify uh, what this object is. Uh, I mean, here I uh, just discussed putting the free energy level, mm -hmm. though it's just one thing. Mm -hmm. To really clarify, yes, you should, yeah, uh, okay, this is in the future directions. You want to compute observables on these backgrounds to see how they behave different. Uh, so that would give you a few more information, but again, that's the future direction. Okay. So uh, we have a new technique for analyzing our functions, expressing them in terms of the, these random partitions and considering the limit of continuous unit diagrams. Uh, we can analyze the result, uh, the resulting sudden bond equations in the space of highest weights. Now, our physical motivation was to understand uh, whether we have a 2D black hole or a winding mode condensate, string theory version of a black hole, in asymptotically flat space. Uh, we reproduced the results of Kazakov, Kostov, and Kutasov, but we also found some new phases consistent with some more extended analysis that uh, Greg had done. And from the matrix model side, it seems that we can even go beyond this R equals to barrier. But again, this remains to be explored uh, further. Uh, we also clarified some various subtleties that I didn't mention that have to do with some science and some details. And we also understood the origin of the microstates that form this, this condensate this object in terms of the elliptic uh, representations. And it seems that if we wish to go beyond the uh, RKT barrier, we need both to consider both types of uh, double dressing. At least from the matrix model side, this is what, what seems to be uh, needed, understood better. So as a few future directions, uh, we would like to study our completely gauged ZZFCT uh, uh, brain model, where we have open strings uh, that stretch between all possible types of brains, ZZ brains, ZZ brains, or cross strings, or FZT uh, strings. Uh, we would also like to analyze observables that could truly, but this is still a question mark, distinguish a black hole from a gravitating long string condensate, and it's the properties of the object if it absorbs. Uh, the things that you try to scatter, if it has some sort of quasi normal modes, if it has some chaos exponents, etc. And based on that, understand the physics of a black hole uh, string transition from a microscopic model. Uh, there's a question about uh, higher dimensional non supersymmetric 
asymptotically flat black holes in the large degree limit. What kind of matrix model tell us about those? It's not clear. And it would be nice also because there are all these supersymmetric indices, for example, in the 1 over 16 uh, BPS sector uh, in N equals 4, uh, that uh, can contain some black hole like physics. So we'd like to see if there are some continuous uh, tableau saddles uh, uh, in these indices and what is their physical role. But again, that's for the very future. I don't know if that's possible, but that would be very, very, very interesting. So thank you. Question for Panos. <clears throat> Uh, did you say you had a matrix model for this? Uh, that had a Lorentz interpretation? To give yeah, a Lorentz matrix model had a, your memory had for, a Hamiltonian, uh, right? For a 2D black hole? Yeah. So the matrix model is this uh, spin calodger type of model, right? This model. And its partition function in a limit reduces to the Kazakov cost of Kutas partition function. But in more general, it's a bit more general. So these super polynomials now don't just have the first time. Uh, they have more times, time operators. Uh, we have written down the saddle point equations for the general, let's say, uh, class of these models, but it, we haven't managed to solve them yet for this more general, let's say, phase diagram. But this would be perhaps a higher spin generalization of the black hole, right? Because you don't just have the, the first winding mode, you have higher winding modes. Actually, Sok Sen and some other people had studied in the past from standard field theory higher spin uh, uh, generalizations of the 2D black hole. So perhaps it could be related with the solution, but this we don't know. We really want to study this, this extended, let's say, subtle point equation, but they're hard in this case. We haven't managed. And we don't have too much in some, right? Even if we solve them, it will be a bit more direct. So, so also like the questions you mentioned at the end to like compute the uh, chaos properties of black hole, it's, just, it's hard to do it from this This is extremely hard with the traditional uh, uh, degrability techniques because tachyon operators on this winding mode background, this is not an integrable model, you break integrability. But we hope with that with this partition function language, uh, we will be able to do something. We're still working on that, but uh, so I don't have conclusive uh, things to say. But we hope that we can, you know, formulate. So the idea is the following: uh, if we don't care about, you know, my, all the let's say fine-grained details of these uh, correlators, uh, we could say that we form something like a, a, a wine condensate. Uh, we define an effective density of states based on this condensate, and then we scatter tachyons with this effective density of states. So I don't know if you know, if you remember the literature, the usual density of states. For matrix quantum mechanics, it is that is this diagram of right? And this is for in the in the this is scattering in the inverted oscillator potential, right? Yeah. This is the effective density the wave function. Yes. Yeah. Now uh, the idea is the following: you have all these winding modes, uh, they condense, and then somehow they make a background, and we're trying to find the effective some effective density states on this background. And so it will be a different function here. And then scatter tachyons with this effective density of states. And this effective density of states now, so okay, there is a very nice formula where you can relate the density of boxes, the Jung diagram, with the density of states in the scattering problem that I didn't have time to describe. So that's essentially the technique that we're trying to use to scatter, let's say, probes uh, on this uh, on this content. Say. You're interested in the chaotic behavior and you can calculate things like partition functions. You the can calculate the spectral form factor. Uh, so, so more. Yeah, the spectral form factor is a correlator of partition functions, right? This is what we want. You essentially want uh, to, for, to Fourier transform Z, theta ones, and theta two. But, and then, you know, you want, the, you want this, the two point function, right? Then yeah. this. Now, I don't know in our case what would be the statistical average, right? So uh, from, from our construction, it would be more natural to try to find the chaos exponent by a four-point function, as it was done in the original uh, models. Try uh, to study a four-point function operators and see if it has some chaos exponent or how it behaves. I guess they're different approach, but... Like, it's a different approach, but it's more natural, let's say, from, my, uh, from our... 
analysis, but yeah, they need to. They don't need to do a somewhere average. Like, I mean, yeah. Just do things exactly, right? Sorry? You could try and do things exactly. Yeah, you could try to do things exactly, just that it's... Just products of special functions. Yeah, but it would factorize, right? So this, this kind of uh, averaging comes because you coarse grain something. So I have to tell you what I force grained and how, right? Yeah. Otherwise it would factorize. So yeah, perhaps in this uh, scaling limit where we take the unit diagrams and we make them continuous, this defines a force graining procedure. I just don't understand the details so that I follow that approach at the yeah. moment. But that's an interesting, that's a very, if it's possible to be done, that would be very interesting. It's of course, as you said, it's also a lower point correlate, right? For, for functions in some sense. It's a different way of understanding that problem. That would be very good. Uh, yeah, we don't know how to do it uh, at this moment in this way. That's, that's why we put it down. Okay. Uh, let's thank uh, Panos again. I don't know.